Good morning, everyone. Uh, hopefully you guys have enjoyed another great event here uh, in Chicago uh, around Big Ten Media Days. I'd like to start and just say uh, thank you guys for all that you do uh, for college football, for the Big Ten, and for our program uh, specifically. Um, looking forward to working with many of you guys here uh, this year as we go forward. Uh, just like all the other coaches, I'd like to thank uh, Commissioner Delaney for all of his years of service, his leadership for our league, uh, for our institutions, our student athletes. Uh, because of him, the Big Ten is as strong as it's ever been in the best league in, a, in the country. And also because of him, Rutgers was able to join such a great league, and we're here today because of him. We'd like to uh, welcome uh, Kevin Warren also as he takes over, and looking forward to watching him continue to grow and strengthen our conference in f years ahead. Uh, it's the 150th anniversary of college football, and at Rutgers, we're very excited about being part of that history. It's uh, important to our institution, our program, our fans, and we're excited about the celebrations that we have scheduled surrounding the 150th uh, on campus. Uh, just a couple of things about our program uh, facilities. Uh, since I've arrived on campus and Pat Hobbs, our athletic director, has gotten on campus, we understand the importance of facilities to have an opportunity to compete in a league like this, and we've con continued to improve our facilities as we go forward. And we're excited uh, in a week here that we're going to open the Greg and Anna Brown family locker room. It's a huge addition to our facilities. And in another year, we're going to open the Gary and Barbara Rodkin Academic Success Center uh, on campus for our student athletes. And uh, uh, I think we've done a tremendous job of improving the experience for our student athletes with our facilities, and it's also helped us uh, in recruiting. 2019, it's a new year, it's a new team. As we go back and look at 2018, like we did at the end of the season, it wasn't a lot of fun. When you're 1 in 11, uh, things are difficult. Um, I own it. Uh, and the good thing is that we can control our future. Uh, we're the ones that determine whether we're going to stay there or we're going to move forward. And I'm really excited about our football team, the way that they've responded, uh, the way they've worked, the way they've come together, and uh, excited about what we can show on the field in terms of improving from uh, last season. I think this year um, we have the best chemistry on our team so far, the best leadership on our team, and it's because of the three guys that we brought here with us today. They're all three elected captains here this spring, two of them are juniors uh, on the defensive side, starting with linebacker Tyshawn Fogg, uh, Tyreek Maddox-Williams, and then offensive lineman Zach Vineski. All three of them are great representatives of our program. Uh, they're leaders. Uh, they're high-charactered individuals. They work extremely hard to be great players, be the best that they can be, and they uh, hold each other accountable as well as other players on our team, and I think that's going to allow us to improve as we move forward. I get asked a lot about what we have to do to improve. And first and foremost, uh, I believe that more games are lost than they are won. And for us, we have to figure out, and it starts with me, uh, how not to lose games. Um, and that starts with taking care of the football, foolish penalties, playing with great fundamentals, and tremendous effort. And those are things that we've been working on through spring, uh, this summer, and we're going to focus on here in training camp as we get ready for our opening game against uh, UMass. So with that, I'll go ahead and open it up for any questions. Not everybody has to raise their hand at the same time. Hey, Chris, James, NJ.com. Yep. How confident are you? You have a lot of depth at Jack and outside linebacker this year. That that's going to help you guys finally get over that hump. I know pass rush has been an issue the past few seasons. Uh, just to look at our defense overall, I think right now we probably going into the season have the most competition. At uh, all three positions, uh, start with our D-line, um, you know, because our, our jack position is kind of a hybrid outside linebacker D-end position. I think we have the most players that we feel confident in playing on our defensive line. It's going to allow us to rotate uh, more players that will keep our players fresh, which will in turn hopefully help increase uh, the production uh, of our pass rush and uh, get more sacks. Uh, at linebacker right now, I think it's the strongest position in terms of the depth and the ability on our football team. And in the secondary, I feel really good about our, our depth and our, our uh, strength there uh, with our players and the competition that we've been able to create through uh, player development and recruiting. But overall, just defensively, I like where we're at from a depth standpoint. Hi, Chris. Jim Cotter, Scarlet Nation. I know you brought in a lot of transfers this past year. Can you talk about any of those? publicly, and if so, which ones can you talk about? Yeah, we did. It just uh, as we evaluated our roster and what we needed to do to move forward, we thought um, we could uh, fill in some holes uh, at certain spots by bringing in some transfers, whether it be four-year 
uh, transfers or grad transfers. And I'm excited about the guys that are on campus right now, what they've shown, the guys that were there through spring practice, some guys that came here this summer, and what they're going to be able to do to help our football team. Um, I think you just uh, look at uh, the offensive side. We, we brought in uh, McLean Carter to help us at uh, quarterback to create some competition. Matt Alimo at uh, tight end uh, is also a transfer that will be eligible here this fall uh, to help us. Uh, on the defensive side, Drew Singleton transferred uh, back home to uh, New Jersey. He's at uh, Will Linebacker for us, and we really like what we've seen out of him uh, so far. But those are some guys that we think have a chance to potentially impact us right now that have been cleared to play. Hey, Chris, Teddy Greenstein from the Chicago Tribune. As somebody who has to play Michigan, Michigan State, Penn State, and Ohio State every year, how do you feel about the debate of uh, realignment in terms of the divisions? Uh, I know a lot of people have talked about that. It, uh, I think it just goes by the year. You know, there was a time when the, the league went to the different divisions that some of the traditional Blue Blood programs weren't as strong at that time. And uh, I, I don't think it, you're going to be able to realign the conference to make everybody happy. And, um, you know, we can try to do that and have those conversations. I just don't think it's possible. Um, it is what it is. It's a very competitive uh, league on both sides, uh, in the East and in the West. And uh, we got to play who we play. And, uh, you know, I, I like where it's at right now, and I don't see it changing anytime soon. Chris, how important has it been to have John McNulty, you know, same offensive coordinator for an offseason now? It's something you haven't had so far. Yeah, that's a big uh, part of uh, what we feel will be our success moving forward, having the same offensive coordinator. I think it's the first time in maybe 10 years uh, at Rutgers. It's uh, an amazing stat, but uh, it, it's a true stat. And I think what John brings going forward and being back a second year is just the knowledge of the players. Uh, you know, when he, an offensive coordinator goes in, uh, to a new situation, the first thing he wants to do is like, here's my package, here's my system, this is what we're going to do, without great knowledge uh, necessarily of, about what the players' strengths and weaknesses are and, and what they can do. And coming back for a second year, John has a, a great understanding of our, our roster, our players, and, and most, uh, more importantly, probably what our offensive line can do and what our quarterback can do. And we've been able to make the necessary adjustments, in my opinion, uh, to fit our, our players and, and hopefully put them in positions to have success, uh, knowing who we have to play uh, week in and week out. And uh, that's a, a, a huge uh, point for our program to be able to get a guy to come back in that position for a second year and work with our players so there is some consistency, but there's some understanding of what we have to do to fit the players that we have. Anything further for Coach Ash? Back on the left. Dustin Schutte, Saturday Tradition. You have two really good running backs coming back in Isaiah Pacheco and Raheem Blackshear. How do you expect them to uh, elevate their game heading into 2019? Yeah, they both had a good year last year. It starts with uh, Raheem Blackshear. He's uh, the veteran guy of the group. Uh, he's also a captain of ours. He's the, the leader of our offense. Really excited to see him take another step uh, his freshman year. Uh, he had an impact on our team last year. Uh, he took a step forward. This next year, we expect him to, to be an elite player for us. Isaiah uh, burst on the scene last year as a true freshman, had some really big runs, some good plays. We expect him to take another step forward and become more of a complete running back. He was a good runner. He needs to become a better receiver as well as a better pass protector uh, also. And we have two uh, other, uh, three actually three other scholarship running backs that we're excited about. Elijah uh, Barnwell is a running back in our program and the two young freshmen, Karon Adams and Aaron Young, that we're excited about. So we think we have a good stable of backs that are going to provide some uh, playmaking ability for our offense, but it'll be led by those two individuals. Coach Matt Reynoldson with KLK and TV in Lincoln. You return about 70% of your offensive production from last year. What's the, what's the dynamic of meshing those newcomers with what you have returning? 
Yeah, it's going to start just on how we install things. We've had some guys on campus in the spring. We've had some guys that just showed up here this summer. Uh, we have to do a great job of uh, installing our offense in a fashion that allows those guys to learn quickly so we can truly evaluate them uh, and not have to think and, and be confused and, and play slow. Uh, but we have uh, uh, th three or four guys that we think are going to be potentially impact players and, and play a big role in our, our offense's improvement and success this fall. But we've just got to be really smart on how we install and teach and allow those guys to learn so we can get a true evaluation on them. If there are no further questions, thank you, Coach. Thank you, guys.